Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I will start a new playthrough series and today it's all about Dark Horse, which is really one of my most favorite games out there on the market. Really, I like, like this game a lot. It's an awesome theme, cowboys, you can never have enough cowboys in your games. It has very, very neat mechanics. I love this mechanic of placing your dice and blocking your opponents that way. And there is still so much, I don't know, storytelling in this whole game in respect to those action and event cards really i love this game a lot as this game offers a pretty neat solo variant i decided to play it solitaire i have never played this solitaire variant before but i played let's say the standard game quite a bit so i decided to go into the cruel mode down there i have no idea if i will be able to make it to be honest but all the others really seem to be a little bit too, let's call it easy. Maybe I will really lose badly, but we will see. In the solo version of the game, you pretty much have 28 turns in order to fulfill one of those five yeah, scenarios here. So you have the Tenderfoot, you have the Wild Frontiers, for example. But I think in this case, I will go for the Gold Rush here. So for once, I have to end the game with three cities on the board and I have to have 10 goals. And this is really not that easy to acquire. So let's see, but I will certainly go for this one now. Let me prepare the game board, which I did in a second by the power of editing. And as I'm playing alone, I decided to use the two player, let's say out of bound regions. So everything that's below this row here is basically out of bound of this row, including this hex is still does count. So I put a second one on top of this so I can remember, but this is pretty much where I have to go. There is no real second player in this solo variant. So this is really perfectly fine for a solo player variant. And unfortunately I will not be able to include any stuff from the Rebels and Rogues expansion here, which really provides a lot of stuff. So many components, so many modules you can include that. And in the rule books here, you will also find scenarios on how to introduce or include those additional components into the game. But I really didn't see any real reason to do that in the solo game because most of the, let's say, expansion modules really increases the player interaction quite a lot. And yeah, playing solo, I think it really doesn't make sense. Maybe you have whatever scenario which makes use of some of those components. Please let me know and we'll perfectly fine to try it out myself but for this playthrough yeah it will be unfortunately without rebels and rogues but i decided to include the roles in the game so i randomly picked the cowboy here which is kind of okay so this is the starting stuff all the players would normally start with the one rail one set of food wood and ore and one of those I think it's the wild die token here and on top of this my character the cowboy starts with two additional food and i will start the game with a bonus die but of course this only counts for one single round but i think that's not too bad especially when playing against three ghost yeah, players in this playthrough but i come to that in a second let's have a closer look at the special abilities of the cowboy First of all, it's I'm allowed to take the scout action on an 8 plus, normally that's 9, which is okay. You may use a natural 2 to take the hired hand action, even if that action has been taken by an opponent, and this can really help me a lot. Normally, you it has to be any any 2, but in this case with a natural 2, so really a die showing 2 pips here, I would be allowed to take that action, but I explain all the rules as I go, of course. I can take the sheriff action on a 10 plus, and I'm allowed to use dice mode modifiers on this this is normally not allowed and whenever a permanent event is put into play i receive the bonus die for the next placement phase so overall i think that's really very good character for this solo variant of the game on top of this i have to place this rail token because this is my starting rail and as i placed my city down there and i was also allowed to place two of those towns on those so-called resource hexes i think i want to make sure to get some ore relatively soon on top of this i'm also allowed to have a look at this tile here because yeah i it's in my area of influence so i can also flip it normally in a multiplayer game you wouldn't flip it you would just look at it until you use in this case it doesn't really matter but i really need some ore sooner or later 
So I think in this case I will place the rail here. So in theory I only need one more rail in order to be able to place a town here. And then I would also be allowed to do a mining action. Yeah, that's already the setup. Again, all the other players, the ghost players, will not do anything. And in theory, we can directly go ahead. But again, keep in mind, I have 28 rounds in order to complete my objective. In this case, build two more cities and then also have 10 gold. And again, getting 10 gold is not easy at all. And yeah, each round, this token moves one space down. If it reaches zero, it goes back to 14 and then it does the same a second time and then I have another 14 rounds left in order to fulfill my goal. If I don't make it, I lose the game. As I'm playing on the cruel level of the game, I'm playing against three ghost players. One ghost player only rolls one die. He will go first. The other two players will roll each two dice. But I think if they take the higher hand, they would also use an additional die during the next round. At least this is how I would understand it. I might be wrong here, but I will play it that way. And also what's also important in the cruel version of the solo game is you always place your action dice last. So normally in the, let's say, easy and medium level, you at least are allowed to place one action before all of the other players take or do their placement. In this case, I really have to wait. So this can really provide me some problems. But yeah, let's get started and yeah, let's roll those dice. I think we will just roll them one after another. Let's start with a single die. This goes on space number six, which is really not a problem right now, I guess, because I'm not going to build anything this round. So we will place this guy here on the builder. Now we come to the red player. We would roll two dice. That's a six, so we only take the highest die now because only as a seven or more we would place two dice. In this case, we would only take the highest die, being a five. So he goes to the Rail Baron, also not really a problem. Last but not least, it's the green player. That's a nine, so he takes the nine as it is. And with that, he will block the scout action, which is kind of important to me. It gives you some of those cool action cards here. But for this turn, I think they're pretty much out of bounds. I now would roll all my three dice. Keep in mind, I have the bonus dice because of my uh, starting ability. As of the next round, I have to earn this one pretty much. So that's a one, a three and a four. Let me see what I can do with that. And I think with a seven, I will go for the engineer action. Unfortunately, turn order doesn't really matter at all in this solo version of the game. I also don't get an additional wild die token because I already have one and you can have always only one of each of those special tokens for each city you currently have. Right now I only have one city so I'm only allowed to have one wild die token and one of those engineer tokens but not two of them. Soon as I have a second city I could go for a second one of course. With the remaining die showing a one, I will produce stuff. So I will go onto this space here. This gives me yeah, basically one piece of wood. I only have more than enough food for now. So I think it's okay to go for some lumber. Now we have placed all of our action dice. So we are officially ending the placement phase. Now we go over to the collection phase and we would start on the left hand would all the way go around the board so first thing would be to yeah produce resource so i take this die back and now all of my towns that are on the corresponding hexes so in this case this was wood produce wood if i would have a second town here i would gain two wood tokens at this point in time so in this case i only gain one wood but that's okay i only placed one single die there so overall that's pretty cool so let's grab it. Then we move further around this track. They don't produce or do anything. They just block the spaces. In this case, I went to the engineer's token. In this case, I don't gain any turn order on top of this. I'm not allowed to gain an additional wild die token. But what's really important, I'm allowed to grab one of those engineer tokens. Those engineer tokens, they show you what they do on the back side. So for once, I'm allowed to share a non-restricted action. So if any one of my fellow gamers is blocking an action, I really need to go there desperately. I can spend 
this die in order to go there. I'm not allowed to do that on a restricted action space like the mayor or the sheriff, but most of the others are perfectly fine. And on top of that, I can also spend this engineer token to change a die to any number. And therefore I can make a natural die result out of this. So if I need desperately a two in order to hire the go for the hired hand i could whatever switch this one to a two and now it's a natural two which i would be allowed to place on this base because of my special action and of course if this action would have been blocked for example by the red player here yeah that's pretty much already the end of the round so we would move the game and token one space to the left and then we would start directly the next round we would start with the purple player that's a three and in this particular variant, I really don't care about the politics action because I don't need any of those influence points. There is another scenario which gives you or which requires you to have, I think, 11 of those influence points. But in this version of the game, I really don't care about those points at all. Then it's the red player. That's an eight. He will place that eight. That's for sure. And with an eight, he will block the engineer space, which I really don't care about at all because I already have one of those engineer tokens. And as I only have one city on the board right now, yeah, I'm not allowed to gain any more of those anyway. Then it's the green player. That's a seven and a seven blocks of the trader space. Also not really a problem, at least not doing this round. Okay, during this round, I only rolled two dice because I didn't go for the hired end hired hand doing the last turn so let's see what we get that's a four and a seven or a four or a three or a seven i could do it either way and this result really stinks to be honest um i think however i do it yeah i only can really use it to produce stuff i always could go to the market but i think right now i'm not about to do that so with a natural four so you see that he's those are four pips so in this case i only i have to place a natural die on top of this so i could not go for two twos or one and a three for example this has to be a natural four and this one would be allow me to produce resources on two hex types which is pretty cool but right now i only have two villages anyway and I think with the remaining die here, I still want to have some more wood. So let's place that die over there. That's already the end of the placement phase. So let's jump right into the collection phase. Again, we would start over here. So let's grab this die. And again, I would gain one piece of wood pretty much. Then let's remove the second die. Keep in mind, they don't do anything. They just block spaces. So I'm now allowed to produce resource on two hex types and so i decide to go for food and for wood in this case so again my towns would reduce accordingly so overall i did a very good production round but not sure if that's important at this point in time but you never know you can never have enough of those resources and there is no limit of how many of those tokens you are allowed to have okay let's end the round let's roll some more dice Again, let's start with the purple player. That's the five, the rail baron. Oh man, are you kidding me? But I think I'm, yeah, I don't have enough or any way to go for the rail baron. So let's place him there. Again, this also requires a natural five to go there. Then it's the red player. That's a nine. We already know this one, but right now I really don't care too much about the scout action, I think, because the pioneer is still available. And then it's the green player that's also a nine and this means normally i would place those dice here that space is already blocked then i would go for the next highest die of either of those that's the five the five is also blocked and as far as i understand stood the rule if that's then already already blocked i would not place any die but to be honest i find that rather lame so in this case i will place the four onto this work crew here maybe <laughs> I have a problem with that if I'm playing it too tough, but right now I'm still feeling kind of confident, so I will play it like this. Then it's my turn. Let's roll those dice. That's a 10, and with a 10 I can certainly do something. That's not bad at all. So I can could either go for the mayor or for the sheriff. The mayor in a solo game is not really that powerful. Of course, I would gain an influence point. I will also gain one of those resources, which is not bad. But again, 
influence is not important for this particular scenario. So I think I'd rather go for the sheriff here. So let's place those dice here. This would give me the sheriff badge. This would give me another influence point by the end of the game if I would still hold it until then. But what's more important, I'm allowed to get this deputy die. And I'll explain what the deputy can die when I um, do my next placement phase. So I think that's really not a bad thing to go for. So I will pretty much exchange one of those dice for this deputy die and then yeah, I can use it pretty clever. And as this is basically the only collection I'm about to do, or the other players don't do anything, I will do it right away. So let's grab this badge, let's grab the deputy die, place it next to my character card and now I would place one spare die here and the deputy die and this blue die are now my main dice for the next round or as long as I'm allowed to hold this sheriff badge here. Not too bad, not too bad. But that's already the end of the round and you see turns are moving pretty fast. So let's roll some dice again. Again we start with purple, that's the four, that's the work crew. I will place it right away, you already know that one. Next it's the red player, that's a three and a one. So he will place the three on the politics action. I really don't care about it for this at all. Then it's the green player, that's a nine. We also know the nine, so let's place those dice onto the scout action accordingly. Now it's back to us and now we would roll our deputy die. So let's do that right away. And the beauty about this deputy die, it allows you to flip the side. So right now it's on a one and if I want to, I'm now allowed to place it onto the other side. Isn't that nice? And I think this is what I will be doing. Yeah, absolutely. So with a four, I will place my die onto this food producing resources. This is a special space. Normally, I only produce that many resources that I do have town hexes on that particular resource hex. So normally that's one food, but because I placed a four plus on this space, I gain one additional food. So it's pretty much any town plus two. In this case, I gain two food resources, which isn't that bad at all. And I think with a six, I will go to the build direction and then I can decide if I want to build a city. Right now I don't have any gold or if I would go for this yeah, town here, which is really, really important. And this is what I will do this round. This already ends the placement phase. So first of all, let's grab this die here. This gives me one food for each of my towns on the food resource hex, but I gain a bonus one because I placed a four plus onto that space. That's not too bad. So let's grab this food and then I will trigger the builder action space here and I will go for a town. So I have to pay two food and now you see that really the order does matter in which you resolve those action spaces and I have to also pay one wood and this allows me to place one town onto this resource hex here. So next time I would produce wood I would gain at least two of those. That's definitely not a bad thing. Let's advance the game and token and I think I will do one final round for today. So again, we start with a purple player. That's the four again, the work crew, not a problem. Then it's the red player. That's a nine. We also know the nine. That's the scout action. Then the green player. That's an E11 and the 11 is the broker, which is also a pretty cool action. Normally we get one of those stock tokens or yeah, I think this is what they're referred to. And those tokens can be exchanged into any three resources or one gold at any time as needed. This is really, really powerful. <laughs> Actually, I need those in order to gain some goals because you need gold to build a city and I also need 10 golds in order to win the game. So right now it's not looking good. Not sure if I will be able to make it, but I'm really working on it. Good thing is I'm still the sheriff, so I have the deputy die. So let's see, I could move it to the other side, of course. And in this case, I might really think king of doing that because I don't want to build anymore and I cannot go to the ninth space so the scout is already taken. So in this case I will put it to the other side and grab a three and a one and place it on the pioneer action. So I need one natural 
one and any die and this would now allow me to draw two cards from the card deck and would be allowed to keep one of those action decks uh, action cards there are events and action cards in the deck so let's just see what we get here we have the old den tucker take the scout action for free no dice required even if it has been taken hmm, that's not too bad that's not too bad and here we have prosperous times take the hired hand action for free no dice required even if it has been taken and i'm allowed to take any three resources of the same type that's perfect i will totally go for this card here i'm still in the collection phase so in theory i could immediately play it but i think right now i don't need to do that so I I can still hold on to that the other card will be discarded and that's already the end of the action or collection phase and also the end of the round and i think i will call it a day for now and i really hope you are enjoying my little playthrough of dark horse here hope i haven't made too many mistakes if so please make me aware please also send in your comments your suggestions in order to come up with some solo variants including some of the expansion stuff and whatnot so far it's not looking great so i really should think of going for the broker and or the tycoon as much as i can because again i still need two more cities on the board and on top of this i also need 10 pieces of gold the good thing is i also get gold when i go to the trader action so i have to pay any four resources and this would allow me to gain one gold or yeah any two of those and with a prosperous times card here this gives me three of the four i need in order to exchange that into one piece of gold so i think overall that's a pretty cool action card Hope to see you soon in one of my next videos, maybe the next episode of my playthrough of Dark Horse. And yeah, until then, bye bye.